This is KHDS News Director Devin Miller live in studio with Newhall School District Superintendent Jeff Pelzell. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Devin. Thanks for have given me the opportunity to be here to speak with you. No, thanks for coming in. So this year has been uh, different, to, to say the, the least. Uh, how is the, the Newhall School District supporting students through distance learning? Well, I think, you know, when you have an opportunity to plan through the summer to start this work, I think it's... It's a very different game than it was in the spring when uh, we had a couple of weeks and bam, we were into that distance learning program. So uh, I think what we're doing this year, we've ensured that kids have devices, hotspots, our classrooms look a lot different in the virtual world. And so uh, I, I feel like uh, we're launching the year very successfully right now. And you mentioned hotspots and, and laptops. Do you know how many of those devices have been given out throughout the district? Yeah, we have deployed about 3,500 wow. uh, devices, whether they're Chromebooks or laptops. Um, in fact, our governing board just last Friday in a special board meeting uh, approved the purchase of another 2,300 Chromebooks. Uh, they're touch devices that we're going to be getting in, which will be great support for our primary students. And uh, we just received yesterday another 500 hotspots, so that will mean we'll have deployed 1,000. Uh, and these hotspots spots actually have unlimited data which is a big shift from before where we were potentially running out of data this this gives us the opportunity to make sure kids will not lose connectivity and especially if there's a, a multi-student household or the, the parents are uh, as well are working from home so this is a great opportunity for those, those students to, to stay online it really is before each of the devices uh, the hotspots had a, a limited number of data and when you're talking about shifting now and launching the year there's a lot more live teaching video lessons that kids are working uh, watching, which consumes a lot of that data. So having an unlimited amount of data is a huge shift from what we had in the spring. And it allows us to put one hotspot in a, in a if, the, if the connectivity is really good in the house, then you can probably hit, put one hotspot in there and two or three kids can get on there, yeah. which is different than before we had one per student. That's great. And um, how else is the district supporting students? I know you guys have, have a child care program as well. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that when we knew that we were going to have to start in distance learning instantly, I thought about the need for our families so that they can go to work. And so we uh, started to partner with our vendors in throughout our district. Uh, each of our school sites had a vendor already providing before and after school uh, supports to our, to our students. And so we began looking at, okay, what's it going to look like if we expand what we have on our campuses? And so we created a subsidy program for any family, regardless of income or not. Uh, and we wanted to make it a working class uh, child care. So from 7.30 to 5.30, parents can drop their children off. They are insured that uh, support and resources uh, during the child care setting and we subsidize for any family $80 a week is subsidized uh -huh. so from 220 down to 140 or 225 to 145 and then if a family qualifies based upon income for reduced rate that's $25 uh -huh. a week and for our families that qualify at a free um, meal rate that's actually ten dollars for the entire week and any f student who qualifies under foster youth or McKinney Vento which is a homeless status we pay for it all wow that's great and that's that's kind of a big point too is the schools are still distance learning but a lot of businesses are starting to open back up again so that's yeah. kind of a hole in the support for these students is if there's no parent to be there be there at home as they're learning at home, it kind of provides, provides support for them. It, it, it's huge. And, and we want to be able to have this continuity. So when we do transition back into our initial proposal was we would have a 100% online digital learning academy for families who didn't want to send their kids back potentially all year. And then we had this blended learning model, which was an AM, PM. So a group of kids would come in the morning and then they would spend the afternoon in distance learning or they would start in distance learning and then come in the afternoon. That still requires childcare for families who are working. And so we want to make that seamless transition available for our families now. And that's a good point too, is even when schools open back up, you guys can't have 20 kids in the classroom. You guys have to have that, that social dis distancing. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely a requirement. And, and LA County is still to the point right now where they're saying no more than 12 uh, right now in terms of the small cohort work. Mm -hmm. The state has opened it up potentially bet for to consider 16, where two teachers up to 14 students. But LA County is saying no, it's a it's a total of 12, even for the small cohort work that might be around assessments, intervention, additional supports. Uh, that's where the county stands right now. Um, and 
we're talking a lot about, about students, but there's also another aspect with the teachers. Um, how, how are the teachers handling this whole situation? You know, our teachers are, they're troopers. I mean, you know, the, the greatest challenge in launching a year like this w when you're solely dependent upon technology, there's been a lot of hiccups, I'll be honest. Um, we've, our, our IT department has been phenomenal, <laughs> but you know, we've launched a lot of new resources, uh, science materials, uh, additional social studies materials that are all online based. And so when you're adding new programs over the course of the summer and we transition to a new program called Clever, which requires a single sign on. So a kid just needs to sign on and when they sign on, automatically up pops all of their resources that they would need. They don't need, need to have multiple sign-ons to these different programs. But of course, that interfacing with our student data management system doesn't go smoothly as planned. And so there's been a number of things that we've had to adjust with it. But you know, our teachers, you know, they always go above and beyond. They're just, they, they just always put forth that best, uh, best effort to make sure kids are engaged in the work. Um, we've allowed them, if they need to take their, their uh, desktop computer home, they can do that, check out a device. If they need a hotspot, we provide them with that. Um, they can also teach from their classroom or they can teach from home. That's a choice for them. We did not dictate that they needed to come onto campus. So we're here live with uh, Jeff Pelzel, the uh, superintendent of the New Hall School District. So that's a great point is, um, if there's no students, teachers can also are uh, allowed to be on campus and use the resources available to them, their, their whiteboards, all the resources that they have. Um, but also bringing that home, I know especially in the younger grades, kindergarten, first grade, there are a lot of like tactile uh, things that they need to, to learn as part of the plans. How, how is the district supporting that? That's a great question. In fact, I was just out of sight this morning and our math manipulatives, so we've ordered a set of manipulatives for every kid at each grade level. So those actually just came in for our Bridges math program, that's kindergarten through TK through fifth grade. And so those will be distributed. We do a lot of distribution of materials, uh, consumables. We do it. Uh, you know, like a unit or two at a time so that they don't all go home and potentially get lost. <laughs> and so we have a lot of distribution of materials. We Some sites have already had two sets of distributions and there will be over the course, you know, probably I would say about every three weeks or so that's going home for families to make sure kids have what they need, including art materials, crayons, pencil pouches, all of that kind of stuff. So it's not just the, the core, it's not just the, um, you know, math and, and reading and English, it's, it's everything. It's, it's, you know, uh, art as well. Oh yeah. So, I mean, what's great for us is we have two credentialed art teachers and they're putting together lessons that kids can join and participate in or watch. And then our music program, we haven't stopped with that. We have our general music program and the, the teachers are pushing out lessons for kids to participate in. Um, and then our instrumental music uh, program, they're doing more like small group individual lessons for kids. We have not missed a beat in terms of that. Uh, that's all launching right now as we're just came out of Labor Day, usually we, we do this, we get things set up, but as we're now moving forward, now we're really launching into the teaching of content, mm -hmm. and that content includes for us as a core, art and music. And what's the biggest difference between the, the spring semester where it was almost reactionary, where like the, this was, was starting to pick up, and now that you have the whole summer to plan, how, how is the fall looking different? Well, it's the resources. So even, you know, we purchased a new uh, curriculum for our art in instructors that's way more interactive and it's really designed to be in a digital platform. The Social Studies Weekly, which is a program that's designed for online learning. Um, our science programs, we purchased a program called TWIG for uh, TK through fifth grade and then NGSS Science for sixth grade. Again, these are online programs. Our other resources just didn't it's not that they couldn't work, but the amount of work it took mm -hmm. to make them work wasn't really worth it. And so we purchased these new resources. Um, we're upgrading our Google Classroom platform. Uh, that is also an enhanced version so that teachers can, um, once it all comes online, Google's in the process of transitioning mm -hmm. to, they had to react to this um, so that they can do breakout sessions for uh, kids and oversee what that work looks like. So there's just a lot more structures in place that we just didn't have because we didn't have time to plan. That's great, and it's not just the, the learning aspect, there's also um, the food aspect. Um, I know uh, the district's uh, partners with the local uh, food, food services agency. Yeah. Um, how, how are you guys working with that? Well, huge relief came last week when we heard that we can actually now go back and do like a summer meal program where any child age one to 18 can go anywhere to get their meals. And so now families, you know, what was happening is we had some kids that were students in our district and students in Hart School District and the families had to go to both places to get the lunches. Uh, it just wasn't convenient. And we saw an instant spike last week as soon as we shifted that where any family, regardless of income status, 
they can go get lunches and that is just a huge asset for our families especially right now considering all things that are going on it's it's uh, a savings for them mm -hmm. and it's convenience and that's really what this is all about that's great it's, it's a drive-through system right so they don't have to leave their car they just no. they, they drive through the school site or whatever they're, they're picking yep. up and they they get their food yeah and the children don't even have to be present the parents come through and they say okay i have three children they'll give them and they give them breakfast and lunch wow. uh, for the families it's 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 an amazing resource that's great. Um, are there any other plans the district has this semester to, to, to support students? You know, I think right now we're in the process. Our board di governing board did approve at our last board meeting the ability to do these in-person assessments for students with IEPs and our English learners. So we're in the process of putting in putting together structures so that we can hold these assessments on campus. That's one shift. Uh, we're really looking at the social emotional learning component of it. We did hire three new counselors. So every single school has a full time dedicated counselor for outreach to families to check in with kids. Uh, that was an investment on our part because we felt like, yes, there's the academic piece, which is important, but there's also the social emotional learning component to this. Um, for students and for staff uh, as well. So, you know, I, th I think we just continue to, you know, we'll be pushing out a survey to our families early in November to get feedback on them, what's working, what's not working, and we just continue to strive to get better. I mean, that's really what this is all about. It's a journey. Uh, it requires patience. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you, our teachers are working so hard, our site administrators, our classified staff, they're just willing to step in and do whatever it takes because sometimes their role, a safety supervisor's role was to supervise kids at recess and that kind of stuff. They're just willing to step up right now and help kids and help families uh, do whatever it takes and that's really what this is all about right now that's great well thank you this has been uh, Jeff Pelzel with uh, Devin Miller KHDS news director and the superintendent of the New Hall School District thank you so much thank you for having me